Dzień dobry and hello ladies and gentlemen to the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. First time in Poland. We do love Poznan. This is the new track and we're so excited to see all the giants racing and competing here in Poland, 270 kilometers east of Berlin. The beginning of the season was very good, um, three podiums and uh, position five in the championship, uh, maybe we can go up to position four and now hopefully we can, uh, we have here also a very good performance, uh, looks like uh, Misano and Slovakia and now we will see. Yeah, you know, for sure, we always try to win the races, but when you can do it, that's for sure, that's uh, very special, you know, because it's very difficult, you know, in the reverse gear race um, to, to start from eighth position and to, to finish first, it's very difficult and um, you, you really need to be at the top of your game and you need some luck, for sure, for sure, you know, I don't deny that at all. So we are close to the airport Wawiza and the adrenaline is going to fly. Who is going to pass here first at the start finish line? We were going to see that first time here in Poland. Um, what are your first experience here at Poznan? Of course, after the qualifying and seeing the track in this great conditions. Yeah, I think it's quite good. I mean, it's uh, interesting, it's uh, challenging, this track. And uh, yeah, I think that the, there is a lot of people coming. So I think it's a, a great atmosphere. Yeah, we enjoy it, for sure. New track. We're here in Poland for the first time, which means for you also technical side. Uh, some slight issues to, to deal with. How was it going? Yeah, the new circuit is uh, of course always nice to include new locations to the championship, so it's nice to be here. We are really grateful that we can be here, but of course it has its own challenges. We have to find a new setup from blank, so we spend the free practices with it, but I can say I think we are in a good way now. The first race of the weekend, of course, always very hotly anticipated. But with this being a new circuit, everybody was super excited to get the first race of the weekend underway at Tor Poznan. It was Norbert Kish on pole position, leading away from Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz, while Jamie Anderson tried his luck down the inside of Antonio Albacetti, going through Big Pan at Turn 1. It was a fantastic sight to see the trucks making their way around this very high-speed corner for the first time and powering on down to Turns 2 and 3. There was a little bit of contact in the middle of the field where the dust got kicked up, but luckily everybody involved got away with it with only light bodywork damage. But as ever, at the front, Norbert Kirsch had made a very tidy start and was starting to stretch his legs and get away from Jochen Hahn, Sasha Lenz and Jamie Anderson. Antonio Albacetti and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez were in there in the hunt as well, but they would obviously be trying to scrap over their necessary positions, especially with Jose Eduardo Rodriguez leading the Promoters' Cup. Steffi Halm eventually shedded the bodywork necessary to continue on with the race without getting a black and orange flag, and it soon became apparent that Sasha Lenz was going to put a challenge up to Jochen Hahn here. The dust clouds once again raising all around the circuit though, fantastically dramatic conditions everywhere you looked on the circuit, it seemed like no matter where we were, there was always something going on. Marshall's working very hard to remove and, of course, replace the penalty markers around the circuit, which were getting knocked flying absolutely everywhere. It was all down to drivers pushing very hard indeed, though, as they tried to extract the most that they could out of this fantastic circuit. Jamie Anderson had got past Antonio Albacetti in the early stages and was staying there in fourth position. A really good return to the championship once again for the Brit. Lucas Hahn was back on the grid as well and he was trying to push through ahead of some of his Iveco driving friends but unfortunately it was a Scania driver of Stefan Fass that would end the race on the sidelines a turbocharger failure it was found to be the blame. 
The field remained very close in most parts of the circuit. The natural concertina effect around here at Tor Poznan, a fantastic sight to behold. Also a sight to behold was Andrei Kurzim's attack on Lucas Hahn. The two of them were battling very hard into the later stages of the race. Minor bits of contact here and there even because they were fighting so hard. It was a really strong first performance though by Lucas Hahn and something that we all enjoyed seeing as we welcomed him back to the grid as part of his 2023 championship. He won't be with us for every round of the season, but still, it's wonderful to have another Iveco on the grid and another driver in the mix. Jochen Hahn was holding on well ahead of Sasha Lenz with Jamie Anderson, his teammate, trying to pile in behind as well. But ultimately, Jochen's experience and very strong defensive driving would come into play and he would manage to hold the pair of them off for a long, long time. It wasn't easy though with some of the very heavy braking zones here at Tor Poznan. It's got a fantastic mixture of long high speed corners and very tight and twisty sections as well. But regardless of those tight and twisty sections, it was Norbert Kish that was leading the way and took another lights to flag victory in the very first race ever for the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship at Tor Poznan. The sound of the horn as the wonderful Baloo took yet another win in a fantastic tally that certainly takes some rivalling these days. Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz completed the podium in what's become a bit of a regular affair in the championship. And how was it competing and racing here? Yeah, for sure. There was a lot of unknowns before, before the race, but um, in the end, it was very good for us. You know, good start, good first lap, you know, stayed out of the fight, which was happening behind me, you know, so I could pull away a little bit and uh, yeah, real happy to take the first victory here in Poland. Here's a look at your race result then. Norbert Kish takes the win by just under five seconds from, uh, sorry, Jochen Hahn. Sasha Lenz finishing in third position with Jamie Anderson just behind in fourth. Then we had a bit of a gap back to Antonio Albacete. I'd be interested to know if there's any issues with Antonio's truck there because he didn't seem as on pace in the race as he was in qualifying. Louis Requenco was next up in 11th ahead of Heinrich Clemens Hecker. Then it was John Newell in 13th place. Jonathan Andre rounds out the field in 14th. We've seen race number one, we've seen great action, we've seen great race action, we're really looking forward for race number two. So Antonio Albacete, second race of this weekend, and it's getting hotter and hotter. How are the conditions for you? Well, yeah, I mean, it's getting hotter, but uh, I hope it is better than this morning, the first race, because we have a problem with the rear anti wall bar, you know, it's broken. And that's why by the middle of the race it was really bad, you know, the handling of the, of the track was really, really bad. So the, the tires suffered a lot. So I hope that we can recover this uh, problem and we have not many, many stress in this race. But it's going to be tough, yeah, for sure. Antonio Albacetti was not kidding with a tough race ahead of him. The two Ivecos starting also on the front row. It was going to be a focusing time for everybody involved. And as our wonderful mini pace truck, the Iveco Daily that we were using for this weekend, due to the low bridge at Poznan, led the field away. It was a very nerve-wracking time for Lucas Hahn, yet again starting from pole position after finishing the first race in eighth position. Everybody was looking forward to see whether the young German could take an overall race victory for the second time after doing it at the Nürburgring in 2022. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez looked threatening in the opening stages, but the main threat to everybody was contact as Jamie Anderson hits the back of Antonio Albacetti. He then hits Jose Eduardo Rodriguez and the pair of them barrel off to the side of the circuit with Sasha Lenz involved as well. Luckily, all trucks were able to continue and the race continued under green flag conditions. Not the perfect scenario though in the mid-pack either as Heinrich Clemens Hecker and Stefan Fass came to strive together and had a bit of contact out of turn three. Eventually they managed to get it all together though and get back onto the circuit. 
At the front, it was Lucas Hahn leading Steffi Halm, Jamie Anderson, Andre Kersim, and Jochen Hahn had had a great start and made his way up into fifth position. In avoiding all of the chaos on the outside of the grid, Norbert Kirsch hadn't really made any ground, which was unlike him in the early stages, but it was certainly a difficult time for T-Sport Burnout, as you can see there from the damage on Antonio Albacetti's number 23 MAN. It had really spiced the race up even more than the normal reverse grid races do, to be fair. And we had drivers from all elements of the championship making their way through the order. Norbert Kish here overtaking Mark Taylor, who'd had a great start to his Promoters' Cup weekend and was staying out of trouble, hoping to continue that form. Before long, Norby had caught back up to Andre Kurzim as well, and the Don't Touch Racing machine was putting up one hell of a fight, but ultimately it would be time for Norby to go through and continue on his charge towards the front of the pack. His next target would be Jochen Hahn, who was at the back of a fantastic five-truck train at the start of the field, and eventually made it even longer with Norby's addition. Black and orange flags went out to Jonathan Andre and Antonio Albacetti for black smoke infringements, to which they would eventually come into the pits and get sorted. But the top five were right together and hoping for a strong battle, and so was everybody watching. It was still Lucas Hahn at the front, though, leading fellow Iveco driver Steffi Halm. Jamie Anderson was holding MAN honours in third position, while the battle behind between the two real titans of the championship, Jochen Hahn and Norbert Kish, was only just getting started. Lucas did everything right, though, and within his power to lead the field in the number 22 machine and would take a fantastic victory in his return to the series in the second ever race at Tor Poznan. It was a very popular result, with all three drivers on the podium getting their first appearances on said podium for the 2023 season. Lucas Hahn, Steffi Halm and Jamie Anderson. They brought a real positive vibe back into the paddock as they ended the second race of the day, and everybody was over the moon for the young German, who really did show how quick he was. A massive thank you already to the team. Can you tell our audience how grateful you are for your team? Yeah, I'm really grateful for the for the whole team because they they worked so hard in the couple of the, of the last two hours, and now they did their job, and now I was in the position to make my job, and I I make my job, and I I'm here with the first place, and I'm really happy for the whole team, and perfect. So Lucas Hahn takes his second race victory in the Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship, with Steffi Halm and Jamie Anderson joining him on a very popular podium. Jochen Hahn holds off Norbert Kisch for fourth place, with the Hungarian in fifth. Andre Kurzim was next up ahead of Mark Taylor and John Newell, with Sasha Lenz and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez rounding out the top ten. Antonio Albacetti unfortunately retiring after the black smoke infringement brought him into the pit lane and he sat there for the rest of the race, and then eventually went back to the paddock.
I visited today, Michael Sikora, the president of the Polish Motorsport Federation. Welcome. I've seen you just insp uh, inspired the yeah. truck and everyone is explaining everything to you. What do you think personally about our trucks? Yeah, no, the Polish, Polish market for trucks is really big. We have a lot of companies working in this branch, so we have seen also a lot of spectators here, not because they love uh, just truck racing, but also about this whole company and whole market on this. So I think it will really be something which will go on and will infect the market as well. Race 3 was a slightly more interesting affair for many reasons. This here being the restart of the race after a big accident in the first attempt. Norbert Kish and Antonio Albertetti would be on the front row with Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz behind, Jamie Anderson and Andre Kurzim behind them on row number 3. Norbert Kish would lead them away though with a big space next to him where Antonio Albacetti's truck would have been had it have made it through the first attempt at the race. Jochen Hahn defending from Sasha Lenz this time round with Jamie Anderson on his inside was reminiscent of the first attempt where Antonio unfortunately was squeezed off into the barriers after contact between Jamie Anderson, Jochen Hahn and of course Antonio himself. Luckily Antonio was okay and the barrier just needed to be repaired between the initial start and the restart but as we got back underway it was Norbert Kish leading Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz with Jamie Anderson behind. Norby extended his lead time and time again making it look effortless as he disappeared off over the horizon. Jochen Hahn was battling with a bit of damage after the initial accident in the first attempt at the race so spent the entire time trying to hold off Sasha Lenz, Jamie Anderson and eventually Andre Kurzin behind. Steffi Halm was having a great battle with Lucas Hahn who was trying to hold on to lead honours in the Promoters Cup from Jose Eduardo Rodriguez as well, despite the bodywork flapping around. But Steffi held firm in front of the pack and managed to hold her position all the way to the flag. Antonio Albacetti was also making waves coming back through the order after starting at the back of the grid after a pit lane start on the green flag lap so he could see these battles going on in front of him and wanted to start to take advantage of them. A penalty had been given to Jamie Anderson for the incident and also Jose Eduardo Rodriguez got a penalty for overspeeding later in the race so everybody continued into the final laps knowing that the order was going to get shaken up after the chequered flag. There was plenty up for grabs and Andre Kurzim's body language certainly showed that as well as he neared the three truck battle in front of him going into the final stages. But Jochen Hahn held true and did a great job of defending from the very fast number three machine of Sasha Lenz. Norbert Kish was once again supreme though and he rounded the final corner to take his second race victory of the weekend and continue his dominant form in the 2023 Goodyear FIA European Truck Racing Championship. The battle behind was certainly a spectacle to watch, especially as they actually didn't swap positions throughout the race, but it was the intrigue of the chase that kept us all glued to the edge of our seats. And eventually, they would not be able to see Norby through all the battling as he disappeared over the horizon. Luckily, a very positive vibe coming from the end of race three after the initial incident had certainly marred the event slightly. A very happy Norbert Kish though takes another race victory on his way to the top of the championship, really getting into the swing of things in his 2023 campaign. A very relieved Jochen Hahn finished in second place despite managing the damage and the attack of course from the drivers behind and certainly in one of his hardest fought performances of late. He was definitely tired after the end of it. He caught up with Christina though to share his thoughts on how it all went. Wow, that was a race red flagged. Uh, what did you see? Ah, it's a big accident, Jamie. Jamie, you know he go in, 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 he goes somewhere where there's no place. We are three cars in the corner, so it's impossible to do it without crash. But you know, you can do two things: braking and say okay, or you can go on the, on your line and hold it, and then we have a big crash and a big accident.
after the result of race three then sees Norbert Kish take yet another championship victory with Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lenz second and third. Andre Kurzin was next up with Stephanie Halm behind and then Lucas Hahn completes the run of five German drivers in a row. Antonio Albacete recovers into seventh place ahead of Mark Taylor after penalties for Jamie Anderson and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez drop those two down to the later reaches of the top ten. Fass, Newell, Andre and Requenco round out the field. Racing Championship is the second day here in Poland, the fourth race and the final race of this race weekend. You saw your team running up, you saw lots of helping hands. How did they cope with the situation you had? Yeah, I think, I mean, it was not a good situation. I mean, yesterday we have something similar. Today, I, I was in the first corner, okay, I was in the outside, leaving a space, no closing the door to anyone, but I just have hitting, 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 and then uh, just go off, you know, Anderson was in front of me, it was a big mess. With a lot of the field bruised and battered after a tough weekend at Poznan, there was only one more race left to go. It was Mark Taylor on pole position after being promoted to eighth after race three, with Antonio Albacete looking to make the perfect recovery drive to end their weekend with a race victory for T-Sport Bernau. We also had Lucas Hahn and Steffi Halm on the second row, both looking for overall honours as well, especially Lucas with the win yesterday and hopefully, for his sake, another win in the Promoters' Cup. Mark Taylor starting on pole position though would definitely want to defend his honour there. The whole field made a really clean start and headed down to turn three for the first time with maybe a little bit of nerves on their mind after the earlier incident in race three but still it was Antonio Albacete down the inside and he would get the lead and then start to run away with it in the hopes of like I say finishing their weekend with the best result possible. There was a little bit of contact as Lucas Hahn ran wide, bounced over Antonio's truck and into Mark Taylor, and then as he rejoined, there was more contact with Sasha Lenz and Steffi Halm. But once again, as a testament to how tough these trucks are, all drivers were able to carry on without any major issues, just a little bit of bodywork damage and a bit of scraping and bruising here and there. Steffi Halm was certainly door-to-door -door with Sasha Lenz as the two of them tried to chase down Lucas Hahn. Sasha eventually getting through, while Norbert Kish now lined up a move on Steffi. Mark Taylor was holding station behind with Andre Kersim and Jamie Anderson in there as well. Jochen Hahn not able to make early progress as we would have expected. It seemed like the earlier damage was still affecting the truck. But after the first lap, it was Antonio Albacete leading and it was looking good for T-Sport Bernau, while all the battles began to rage behind. Norbert Kish eventually getting past Steffi Halm would latch onto the back of Sasha Lenz, who would then also be towed around by Lucas Hahn. The young German showing some fantastic defensive driving skills, though, reminiscent of his father. Sasha Lenz eventually went on to make the move near the end of the race, but hoping that Norby wouldn't follow him through was all he could do, as Norby kept on pushing and pushing to also make a move on Lucas Hahn. He'd go round the outside into turn six, with Lucas still trying to maintain the inside line, but ultimately through turn seven and eight, Norby would edge ahead and get himself into a podium position. The first time, actually, that we'd seen Norby on the podium without being in the lead. Sasha would have his work cut out to hold Norby back in the final laps, but Antonio Alba says he just had to make sure that he could coast home in his number 23 MAN, as these guys battling would start to hold each other up more and more in the later stages of the race. As Antonio rounded the final corner, the team was absolutely ecstatic to finish their weekend with a win. A very, very tough time for Antonio and the team had been overcome by this silver lining at the end, with Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kish in second and third, and Lucas Hahn taking another Promoters' Cup victory in Truck 22. See, so... Uh, what is the emotion that is, comes to your mind first right now? 
Well, I mean, uh, at least it's a victory for the team, you know, they work quite hard. But it's been a very bad weekend. Uh, I mean, we have very bad luck, you know. Uh, but, OK, this is racing. Sometimes you are on the top, sometimes you are on the, <laughs> on the bottom. But, uh, yeah, at least we have a victory, so I'm happy with this victory, but we should not have uh, better results this weekend. I think we are faster, and if we don't have more problems, we should have more points on the championship. But anyway, we keep fighting. Next one. Next one indeed, Antonio Albacete focusing on the future for his championship. He takes the win though in the fourth race of the weekend ahead of Sasha Lenz and Norbert Kisch. Lucas Harm put up a fantastic defence and eventually came home in fourth ahead of Steffi Halm with Mark Taylor and Jose Eduardo Rodriguez rounding out the Promoters Cup podium in sixth and tenth places respectively. Jochen Hahn not having the best of races though, finishing in ninth position. In terms of the championship, Norbert Kish now has a 30-point lead. That's race one and race two of a weekend covered, with Sasha Lenz in third. Antonio Albacete now two points behind, and Andre Kurzim holds on to his fifth position in the championship, as he mentioned before, he was so, so proud of. It's going to be entertaining to see how he holds on to that and moves forward. Jose Eduardo Rodriguez leads in the Promoters' Cup from Stefan Fass, really extending his gap over this weekend with Mark Taylor in third. We're all very excited, though, as we head to the Nürburgring in two weeks' time for the International Truck Grand Prix. It's going to be a fantastic event once again, and we look forward to seeing you there.